in the next 15 minutes or so i'll be talking about what to do when it is time to let go a hospitalist overview this is what according to the theme of this conference comes that back to basics that we go although we know everything what we do but still it is better to at least revise once again and remember whatever points we forget while we treating the terminally ill patients well uh, as we all know that the principles of critical care are usually done with the intensive care management and the cornerstone of intensive care management falls in three categories that first is that we should optimize the patient's physiology that how his organs are working whether heart condition is what is the heart condition like what is the condition of his gi what is the condition of his lungs and others so we should assess exactly the physiology of these patients all together and then we should have the provision of advanced organ support whether we want to provide a BiPAP, CPAP support or we want to put the patients on ventilator or there is a rice tube to be put in and likewise and finally we should also know identify and treat the underlying pathological process that what the disease process the patient is having but then in accomplishing all these we should best achieve through the multidisciplinary team approach individual you can't do all this and the shared responsibility is between the admit, ad, admitting consultant in charge as well as the specialized critical care team so the coordination between these two is all the more important for the betterment and the care of the patients well the three goals for the medical care are once we try to cure the patients of the disease process and we want that the patient should be all right the second is if we are not able to cure properly we try to stabilize the functioning of the organs and we try to stabilize the blood pressure if it is hypotension and likewise and third if we are not able to do even that then we prepare the patient for a com comfortable and dignified death well end of life care is the term which is used to describe the support and the medical care given during the time surrounding the death of the patients and this type of care doesn't happen only in the moments before breathing ceases and the heart stops rather elderly people often live with one or more chronic illnesses and need significant care for days months or even years altogether so naturally it is a continuous process it is not a momentous process which we should look for and that is how we should treat these terminally ill patients now caring for the dying patients transition in the care from attempting to heal the patient to caring for them near death can be difficult for everyone involved and that is why i say that three c's are very important for the care of the terminally ill or for any medical profession first is the competence that the patient first see is the competence that the pa that the do doctor should be competent enough to deal with these terminally ill patients and take a, a care of the patient in the intensive care the second c is the compassion that the patient the, the doctor should have that zeal and enthusiasm to to treat these patients properly and with a lot of care and sympathy and of course the third c stands for communication that communication may involve even the verbal communication as well as written communication where we need to prepare all the drafts and consent is to be taken from the patients informed consent and other legal documents which must be prepared so these three c's i think are very important for all the clinicians to practice and for the caring of the dying patients <coughs> it is the transition in the care from attempting to heal the patient to caring from them near death and that can be difficult for everyone involved maybe a clinician maybe a nursing staff maybe a hospital staff maybe patient himself of course as well as the relations so healthcare providers sometimes feels 
that if their job is done, once the, they feel that the patient cannot be further cured and they drop out of the patient care leading to the patients and their loved ones feel abundant as near death. So patient and their loved ones wish for guidance on the complex changes that the patient is going through emotionally as well as physically and that is why it is all the more important for the, for the clinicians to be little more concerned about all the aspects of the patient's care once the patient is in ICU. The principles of a doctor's role in the terminal care, yes, the, there should be an attempt for the symptom, control of the symptoms and the relief which we should give to the patients as well as we should communicate properly with the patients, never isolate the patient as such. We should not say the true to the relations that we should talk outside as the patient will be listening. Patient should not be ignored and we should involve the patient in the discussion itself and explaining all the disease processes as well as the care. Avoidance of inappropriate therapy is very, very important. The support of the relatives, this is a teamwork and the teamwork involves the hospital staff, the physiotherapists, the social workers, as well as the team of the critical care medicine, as well as the consultant in charge under whom the patient is admitted. And continuity of care on the regular visits, that is very, very important uh, because it gives a moral support even to the patients as well as to the relatives altogether. So how should we share the bad news? The f we should find an appropriate setting and the time one should be very well prepared about the disease process, the outcomes, because these are the questions which can come from the patient's relations and the doctor should be prepared enough to answer all these questions. Ask the patient, we should, one, the clinician should ask the patient who should be present and we should take the advice of the patients also that which relative he wants that should be there for the discussion of his prognosis as well as the treatment part. Uh, be brief and simple. Align what do you know as well as one should be honest enough to explain about the disease process and the outcome. One should have the patience to listen to the, from the relations also and sometimes what happens that once we know that we are not able to cure the patient, we lose our patience altogether. We should support, we should support day in and day out and of course we should offer the next steps also. We should explain to the relations that this patient might be put on the ventilatory support or whatever is to be done next, as well as the documentation need not to say that these are very important aspects in the terminally ill patient's care. Where counseling of the relati relatives, the family members of the patients who are in the intensive care units, they encounter many psychological problems, many psychological crisis, they are under stress as well as depression and one study has shown that more than 43% of the relatives of the patient who had been uh, in ICU in intensive care units had high level of depressive symptoms even a year after the discharge of the patient. Well, advanced care planning should be done. The, we should arrange a private setting and a sufficient time for the explaining of all the pros and cons of the disease process and the outcome. It should not be a crowded setting where the patient may not like to discuss his disease process among other attendants, so we should have a private setting, determine what the patient and the family know about the illness and the prognosis, and accordingly we should try to explain to them in detail. We should not give them the false hopes, but at the same time we should not, you know, dissociate ourselves from further management, exploring what they are hoping for and what the team can and cannot do to meet the expectation we should explain in detail suggesting realistic goal and indicating how they can be achieved and explicitly addressing unreasonable and unrealistic expectation we should not put forward to them and respond empathically to emotional reactions and making plans and follow through whether the patients they, they want to take him home even in the home care should be we should try to help them to arrange for the home care as well. Total patient assessment and the management must be done whether physical assessment for pain, dyspnea, insomnia, nausea, vomiting, whatever symptoms the patient is having in the terminal stage, we should look for and try to deal these symptoms very amicably. Psychological assessment of anxiety, depression, delirium should be done and even social assessment 
whether relationship with their with their family members even their financial status that should be taken into consideration and of course a spiritual assessment and counseling is, is is must be done to these patients all together as far as the symptom controls are concerned ensure that the patient and the family are aware that play, pain will be controlled and there is a great fear of pain and painful death in the patient's attendant's mind so we should try to alleviate those symptoms sort uh, start analgesia early regularly and in appropriate dose don't afraid of using opiates and control other system uh, other symptoms like cough dyspnea sleeplessness or even constipation usually these are the common symptoms which terminally ill patients they they they, they encounter to even communication as i have told you that above all give the patients time to talk of his fears and his problems be honest and truthful if the if you are questions and but you should not answer very pessimistically it's a gentle truth that is generally the best way to answer <coughs> and adopt a kind and sympathetic approach not refraining from touching the patients probably in the last two years after the covid we have gone back and we have avoided touching the patients but touching the patients physical touch gives a lot of soothing to these patients respect his religious conviction never say there is nothing more can i do this is the usual sentence or proverb which we use but don't raise false hopes but reassure the patients that whatever best possible can be done it will be done and patient physical uh, physicians and patient communications the does the making implementation as well as documentation of the treatment decision is the practice of critical care medicine the communication and interaction between the critical care physicians and critically ill patients involves informed consent and risk management which should all be noted down and documentation is very legal legally one should be strong <coughs> and documentation is a very important aspect well avoidance of inappropriate therapy is a very very important part because that makes all the more legal issues and you know the the issues with the management as well as in the patients consider the time and question the needed for any invasive palliative measures such as intravenous infusion putting the patients on the ventilatory support bipap or cpap supports so current medication assessment and non essential should be discontinued unnecessarily medication higher dose of antibiotics up higher up antibiotics should not be used blood test even investigations antibiotics intravenous fluids turning regimens vital signs these are all important important aspects which we know but then sometimes we forget in our busy daily practice we forget to follow some of these and we should always remember and at the end we should respect the patient's wishes supporting the family members is all the more important and five steps approach to improving the communication in icu with the families starts with the value we stand for value with the family statement acknowledge the family emotions l for listen to the family understand patients as a person and elicit family questions so these are the values which one should practice while treating the terminally ill patients as a team work involve one or more members of the team night nurses health visitors home help occupational therapy social workers or physiotherapists they all should be involved in the terminally ill patient's care so that he can pass off peacefully and not very uncomfortable do not forget an appropriate religious help all together so ensure that the patient and the relatives know that someone will always be available in the night and day to help them and visit regularly to provide the support do not abandon the patients so my dear friends the cooker ross stages of dying involves five stages of the model where the, the the doctor can help in the patients and caregivers by explaining five stages of response to impending death first stage is denial and isolation where the patient says it can't be he that he has got a terminally ill and second stage is anger that he says that why me the third is the bargaining where the patient says that just let me do this first and then let me go the fourth is the acceptance of the illness and the terminal stage 
and where the patient goes in depression with the withdrawal and crying and grieving. And finally, he accepts that it is the end of the life and a sense of peace comes to the patient. So these are the five stages where the patient goes from illness to the terminally stage. So my dear friends, my last slide, and I think I have, I have completed well in time, that conclusion is that the physicians have a very important role in the later stage or last stage of the person's life. Free and open communication with the patient and his family are very important. Every possible support will need to be provided to alleviate visible sufferings. Avoidance of futile measures which increases the patient's suffering and drain the family's resources can be achieved by guiding the patient and his family by a physician who is perceived to be very involved and that is very, very important. Do everything from the caring family may sweeten be converted to do everything useful by a sensible physician. So in the end, I would like to say that let the patients know that why should he die before death comes. So naturally, if we give a very supportive role, we play a very supportive role and give a moral booster as well as physical support to these patients, they die a very peaceful death. And I think that is what a clinician is expected by the medical ethics also that a clinician should for perform. Well, with this, I would like to end my talk and would like to thank all of you for a patient listening. And thank you, Anuj, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much.